Let's go to Rick Reichmuth. You are in the Fox Weather Center to give us an overview of what we're seeing. Hey, Dana, by the way, if you haven't downloaded the Fox Weather app, you should do it because you can get a live stream of weather at any time on your phone. And a lot of people who maybe will lose power, it'll be one source that you have where you can continue to get live weather information and weather coverage, even if you don't have cable anymore or Internet, as long as you've got power still or you know a battery still on your phone all right take a look at these images absolutely incredible wind speeds have been amazing with these are the recorded highest wind speeds that we've seen 135 miles an hour in cape coral the wind gusts right there obviously you have to have a sensor where you got the wind gusts and so to get measurements like these it also in sensors that haven't been knocked down uh, it's quite amazing. This storm came on shore in Kia Costa, Florida, which is the exact same spot that in 2004 Hurricane Charlie came on shore. Amazing that the same location saw two category fours uh, come on shore anywhere in the U.S. that has never happened before. So really uh, an amazing just coincidence for this 140 mile an hour sustained winds now after that 155 it will continue to weaken that said because it came on shore so strong it'll still likely be a maybe still a hurricane when it exits the other side of Florida after traveling probably about 140 miles or so in that direction from the southwest towards the northeast still looking very amazing on satellite representation and we have tornado concerns across the eastern side of the state that tornado watch a new one has just been issued and that goes until one o'clock this morning all right here's the latest radar picture you see this right there those dark reds and yet one little green box that is not from flooding from storm surge that's flash flooding that is going on here just from the rainfall this northern side of this eye wall has been in that for about the last four to five hours so we're getting incredible rainfall rates I want to show you this this is our exclusive Fox model uh, and watch what we expect the radar to look like or what one model thinks it'll look like this goes throughout the overnight hours uh, by the time we get towards tomorrow we're going to be watching an incredible amount of wind come in towards the Jacksonville area uh, and the St. John River there we think we'll see pretty spectacular storm surge there so the other side of the state getting a lot of storm surge and obviously all the rain that is still yet to come. We're going to see some spots well over 12 inches of additional rainfall. We'll see some spots. I'm certain in some rainfall totals that are going to be probably over two feet pushing 30 inches or so right here. This is through tomorrow. A high risk for flash flooding on the other side of the state that is not issued very often just a couple times a year. So be very careful all the way towards the eastern side of Florida and we have hurricane warnings even in places like Daytona Beach on the other coast. That's because it came on shore so strong. One to just point this out. Also, tropical storm warnings in effect across coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina, because once this storm gets back out here into the Atlantic, we expect it to make a left hand turn there again and make a secondary landfall, probably as a strong tropical storm across parts of Georgia and South Carolina. So a lot of impacts still to be had from this storm. Guys, Rick, Rick you're so good at this stuff. Um, really well done there. Rick, when you think about the path that Charlie took 18 years ago and how similar this is. What has surprised you about this storm thus far? Well, listen, I mean, an incredible surprise to see it make landfall in the exact same spot. Like, it doesn't even make sense that you could possibly have two Cat 4 storms come on anywhere in the U.S. coastline. We don't have that many Cat 4 or Cat 5 storms that come on shore. And to have that in the exact same spot is an amazing coincidence, also a horrible thing for the people down in that area around the Fort Myers, uh, 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 Sanibel Island, all these areas getting this kind of an impact again. The sad part about this storm is it's just so much larger. Charlie was a really strong storm, but a really quick and a really small storm. Uh, and this one is just so much bigger. That just means the impacts are that much bigger. And let's honestly, uh, Bill, so many more people live in Florida now than did 18 years ago. So it's just yeah. a lot more people, a lot more infrastructure there that is going to have to deal with this. And Jessica Tarlov has a question for you. Hi, Rick. Thanks so much for joining us. Sure. I want to build off of what you were just discussing. Because the storm is moving so slowly, what is your expectation for how long it will take for the system to go through and then I guess turn into that tropical storm that will hit Georgia and South Carolina next? Yeah, so it's like a Friday night landfall somewhere here across Georgia, South Carolina, Friday night into Saturday morning. But we've got this all night tonight and throughout all the day today, uh, tomorrow, we're going to be watching this incredible rain here, even some into Friday rain, especially across the eastern side uh, of the state. I want to tell you, a lot of times you always hear, most of the time you say the right-hand side of a storm is the worst, and that is always a case for storm surge, and it was the case in this one. 
but the way this storm will work out, most of the moisture is going to be on the left hand side of the storm. So the rainfall rates, not where you got the storm surge, but on the other side of the storm is where it's going to uh, be so extreme. And we just have a long period still to get through. The other thing, you know, we're getting really good images from this storm right now, the storm coming on in the daylight, which oftentimes doesn't happen. So we're getting some images now, but a lot of places still are not able to be reached. The storm surge is still in place where the storm surge came on shore. Uh, and so it's going to be a while before we get images and obviously it's getting dark. So it'll really probably be by tomorrow afternoon before we start to get some images of that immediate coastline. To answer your question, I just rambled on there, Jess. Sorry. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we, we appreciate it. Yeah, Judge but, Janine but has we a got a long time here still. Janine, okay. sorry. Rick, it, it's Janine. The question that I have is when we talk about the wind and we talk about how strong the wind is, the rain is really the problem, correct? And that when the wind stops, the rain continues, and that that is what causes the flooding. It's almost as though the flooding is the bigger problem, ultimately. Well, more people die from the flooding from storms than certainly from wind. It's from the inland flooding that we see that. But that comes from two things. One is the storm surge. It's that bubble of water that gets pushed up from the wind of a hurricane, and that bubble of water pushes on shore. That's one piece of flooding. When you have winds that are in the 150 mile an hour range, that's also incredibly da dangerous. It will rip off uh, right. roofs of people's homes. It will cause a lot of power outages. It will destroy mobile homes. So there's that threat. And then you're right, there's the flooding from the rain. And because this uh, storm is moving so slowly, we get more rainfall in the same spot. And that's why we'll see some totals, 30 inches of rain across a Florida that's already really saturated. They've had a really wet last couple of months. So the ground is already saturated. Trees are a little bit more unstable. Now you get 30 inches of rain and winds, some spots even not on the shore, but get 50, 60 mile an hour winds. And that'll cause a lot of damage as well. Thank you. Jesse? Hey, Rick, in your career, have you ever seen a hurricane this big? Uh, yes. Which one? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Katrina was huge. Uh, Irma was really big. Uh, right after Katrina, Rita was really huge. So there's a lot of really big hurricanes. And it does matter if a hurricane's big or small, because sometimes when we talk about 155 mile an hour winds, that's not the entire size of the storm getting that. Those are the winds that are closest to the center of the storm. But the stronger a storm or the bigger a storm, those winds will extend farther out from the center. So you have more people getting the stronger winds. But as far as actual size, this happens frequently that we get some very, very large storms. I think the reason we're comparing it to Charlie is because Charlie hit the exact same area uh, as a Cat 4 storm, but a small one. So a larger storm is just gonna have much bigger impacts for a lot more people. Rick, I had a question about the, you know, Governor DeSantis has been keeping everyone updated through regular press conferences. He's due to give another one at 530. So when he does that, what's something that you'll be wanting to learn more about? Yeah, I mean, he's going to have some updated numbers for us, I would imagine, which, you know, we know we're over a million people without power. You're without power going into the overnight hours. Obviously, it's really warm. You don't have any worries about, about cold. But we'll also probably get some information about what kind of uh, not just damage, but water rescues that are, are going on. We've heard reports that people are calling and saying we need to be rescued for our, mm. from our homes. Uh, where this came on shore, we are hearing that the water level from the storm surge is at people's roofs. If you remember back to Katrina, and I'm not saying this is a, as a Katrina situation because it was a very different kind of flooding situation from the levees breaking. But here, if you have your home and the water is up to your roof and you didn't leave, you have no place to go other mm. than to get to the attic, knock a hole out of the attic, and then wait there to be rescued. So yep. I want to know what they're hearing from people and then what their plans are to help people who did stay. Well, yes, and we will all be paying attention to that. Rick Reichmuth, yep. thank you so much. I'm sure we'll see you again this hour. You hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.